Hey guys, today I'll be giving my presentation on carcinization of crabs. So let's start out by defining what a crab is. So we have a ghost crab, a hermit crab, and a horseshoe crab. And since they all have crab in their name, I'm sure they have to be in the same group, right? Well, when we look at phylogeny, that's not exactly the case. The horseshoe crab is actually so different, it's in a completely different order, Zephosaura, compared to the infraorders of ghost crab and hermit crab, which are decapoda. But what's important to us in this presentation is the difference between the infraorders Brachiora and Anamora. And that's because when I'm going to be talking about what a crab is throughout this presentation, I'm referring to characteristics of the infraorder Brachiora. Why is that? Well, Brachiora are referred to as the true crabs. This includes species like snow crab and blue crab, and they have specific but general characteristics just because of how various crustaceans are. This includes a wide cephalothorax, that's the head casket portion of the crab, also known as the perion, and the shortened pleon or abdomen, which is the tail of crabs, but you would see it in a, in a creature like a lobster, which has the long segmented tail, but in crabs they're fused together and tucked underneath the perion. Not only this, but Brachiura crabs are capable of living both on land or underwater because they have both gills and lungs. So if the hermit crab isn't a true crab, what is it? Well, it's part of Anamura, the false crabs. And as you can see from this picture of a squat lobster, a terrifying picture of a hermit crab, and an even more terrifying picture of a coconut crab, that this is the sister species of Brachiura and they're not considered true crabs. This is because they have different characteristics and they're from a different lineage. These characteristics include a much narrower cephalothorax, as you can see in all of them, and a larger, more segmented, more mobile um, abdomen. As you can see, the hermit crab has the long abdomen. The coconut crab has a large abdomen that's kind of tucked underneath it as a ball, but if it wanted to extract it, it could. So what is carcinization? Well, it's the massive convergent evolution of Anamora crabs that are gaining characteristics of Brachiora crustaceans. And we know this because crustaceans are marine animals. They're very suitable for fossilization. And we have huge fossil records from the Cretaceous period. And scientists looked at this and did phylogenetic studies and saw that this process of carcinization from Anamora species has been happening multiple times independently of each other over the time. And an example of this, as you see in the picture, is that a king crab on the right side, which as you, if you were to look, looks almost exactly like the snow crab, evolved from something that looks like the hermit crab. And scientists know this because of one, phylogenetic studies, and two, studies performed that really gave us great detail showed that the asymmetrical form of the cephalothorax of the hermit crab actually carries over in about the exact same ratio in the king crab cephalothorax, which prove, it provides great evidence as to show the direct evolution from an Anamora species to show brachiora characteristics. Other examples of this include porcelain crabs, hairy stone crabs, and coconut crabs. They're all species of Anamora, but show a lot of characteristics you would think they were of the brachiora. So why is this happening? Well, scientists don't have an exact explanation as to why, but they have a lot of hypotheses to why. The major of them being that a large tail, a large abdomen, is helpful to a creature like a lobster that needs to balance out the front heavy claws with something in the back. So in that case, for swimming on the ocean floor or scuttling along, it's very helpful. But when you take a lobster out of water, it's not very mobile. Well, that's why um, brachiora characteristics are so desirable. It allows crabs to do more things. The wider perion and the smaller pleon or abdomen allows crabs to move better on land. And as you can see in this picture on the left, it allows this crab to maneuver into areas that it would struggle with if it had a larger abdomen. So it can get in between rocks and coral reefs or in the horrific case of the coconut crab, it's actually able to climb up trees and hunt animals like birds. So the lack of the long abdomen 
actually allows them to fit more niches on land, which allows them to be more diverse. They also think that the large abdomen kind of just serves as a point of attack. There's not a great way for crabs to defend behind them. So unless they're getting in a corner, it's a really big weak spot. And so that's why you see species like the coconut crab tucking even in a large abdomen underneath them as much as they can to minimize areas of openness. So carcinization opens up crabs to new niche possibilities that previously we couldn't have had. So should all crustaceans be doing this? Well, no, natural selection is tinkering without a goal. And we know this because if all crustaceans were to form like this, they would all be fighting for the same thing. And you wouldn't want 500,000 competitors trying to do the same thing. No, speciation is good. The fact that we have Anamora ambrecura is good. And there are several instances of decarcinization, which is the reverse process happening, even in the same time the Cretaceous period when carcinization was happening. An example of this is Calicamera, or, sorry, Calicamera perplexa. It's a Brachiura species that actually evolved more Anamora primitive species. It evolved things like the paddle feet and long eyes without any stalks on them. Another example is the family Hippoidae, which is an Anamora family, super family, and it contains species like the mole crab and the sand flea that actually didn't evolve characteristics of Brachyura, but instead enhanced and built upon their characteristics of the Anamora suborder or infraorder. And so if all species were going to go towards the same thing, you wouldn't you'd run out of variance in crustaceans. So although carcinization can open up different species of crabs to new possibilities, which is why we've seen it happen so many times, because we're always going to move towards variance when possible, when there's niches open, it's not always going to be the case. It's not the perfect thing to do. All right, that's my presentation on carcinization of crabs. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them to me in the discussion post. Thank you.